Jesus' suffering on the cross is a picture difficult to understand. He was betrayed by a friend, arrested, and falsely sentenced to death, but Jesus never looked back. He kept going. Jesus could have avoided the cross, called down fire from heaven, or summoned legions of angels to rescue him, to save him. But Jesus was not interested in saving himself. He was all about saving you. Every detail of this torturous path to the cross was part of God's plan to bring you to Him. We're all broken. We've all messed up and have all made wrong choices. And no one had to teach us as a baby about anger and selfishness. We just came out that way. Sort of a sin covering. But on the cross, with His blood He shed, the Bible says Jesus blotted out our record of sin, nailing it to His cross. The blood of Jesus washes away our sin covering. And His blood is our ticket. Our ticket to enter through a new door, a forever relationship door with God. So what do we do with this great news? The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see, it's not enough to believe in Jesus with just your head. You must believe with your heart. Now, there's just one person alone at the foot of the cross. It is you. What will you say to Jesus? Say, thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood for me. I'm giving you my heart today, Jesus. I do believe you died for me and that you were raised from the dead for me. Please give me a new heart and a new life right now. Jason Blood Church coming to you today. God bless each and every one of you. Pay attention to the salvation message at the beginning. Jesus Christ is the testator. He is the perfect Lamb of God. He was God in flesh form, came down, never sinned, walked a perfect life. According to the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Jesus, he died, he buried, he rose from the dead, and he shed his precious blood on the cross at Calvary to get, forgive you for your past, your present, and your future sins. So how do, you, how do you get saved in our time? It's simple. It's a free gift. It's grace through the blood. Believing on what Jesus did on the cross to wash away all your sins. Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10. The Bible says, believe with your heart, confess with your mouth to salvation. And Ephesians chapter 2, 8 and 9, it's not a works to be saved. You can't earn yourself into heaven lest any man could boast. Take a look at Ephesians 2 and verse 20. And the Bible reads, and are built upon the foundations of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. We are one body by the cross, looking at 2.16, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. We have a chief cornerstone and a foundation laid. And so what about that foundation? What is our responsibility with that foundation? When you build a building, you know, if you don't build it right, it, it crumbles, it falls, and the foundation is faulty. It's not going to stand. Let's take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. And the Bible reads, let's go, well, we go back a little bit here. Let's go to verse 9. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. So we are the building. Verse 10. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. So we are to, we are, our foundation is Jesus Christ. He is the head of the body. We are the church. You know, we are God's husbandry. We're his workers. We build upon the foundation of Jesus Christ. Now this is about the judgment seat of Christ. Verse 11, for other foundation can no man lay that, that, than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So he is the foundation. Verse 12, now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. The day shall declare it. That's the judgment seat of Christ. And so as we work in the field of unbelievers, of unsaved, of people that need to hear the gospel, this is what this foundation is, that Jesus died on the cross. And it's a beautiful story. Let's go from here to First Peter 
and we will go to chapter 2. Start about verse 6. And maybe we'll start a little bit further back. Verse 4. To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen to God and precious, this be Jesus, ye also as lively stones, so we are also lively stones, are built upon a spiritual house and a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Verse 6, Wherefore also it is contained in the Scriptures, Behold, I lay a Zion, a chief cornerstone, we see Jesus, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Verse 7, Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. Verse 8, And a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Now, this is a future timeline, but it's, it's, it's relevant to, to us here today in the church age. The rock is Jesus, and, and as a believer, we're a priesthood, a royal priesthood, and, and the chief corner's stone is Jesus and that foundation. And we, again, is about building and being out there in the field working. And it's really a, a beautiful picture. The church is called a peculiar people um, in verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into marvelous light. We are in marvelous light because of Jesus. We're in him. We're peculiar people. So peculiar people, uh, t today that peculiar means odd, right? It means it, it, it has a negative connotation. But really the true meaning of the KJV original meaning of it was the private property of someone or the distinctive characteristic of a person, a group or a thing. Well, we are a group of Christians. We are, we are a private property of the Lord Jesus Christ purchased by the blood. Amen. You know, we're not of the world. We're different than that. And we're pilgrims, if you want to think about that. In, in a foreign land, our home is in heaven, the third heaven. It's a heavenly home compared to a earthly home that the world and those that are lost have. So, you know, are you out there preparing yourself to, to do the work of the Lord? Are you building on that foundation? This is a great question. We're, we're, we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You know, it's, it's a spiritual body of Christ throughout the world. And we're all part of it. Are we loving each other, our brothers and sisters in Christ? Are we teaching others the things that we have been blessed with and God has given us in our heart to love fellow Christians as well as the lost world? I pray for each and every one of you in these times. If you need prayer requests, please leave them. God bless. Have a great day.